Hello there and welcome to our show. My name is Lewis Wheeland. I publish the official relocation guides on Atlanta that are distributed by the First Multiple Listing Service of Atlanta. We have five publications, one for Gwinnett County in partnership with the Gwinnett Chamber of Commerce, one for North Fulton in partnership with the North Fulton Chamber, one for Cobb County in partnership with the Cobb Association of Realtors, one for the metro area, and one for Inside 285. They are distributed to realtors to give to their home buyers. They're also at the multiple list, the FMLS stores, and they're on my website, atlanticommunityprofiles.com. And they are also on the FMLS website um, for agents to access. And um, I'm also a realtor with KW Commercial. If I can help you with any of your real estate needs, my website for that is lewbeelan.com. And um, every uh, week we interview community leaders, and it's our privilege again to welcome back to our show Jeremy Crawford, who is the president and CEO of the First Multiple Listing Service, which is one of the largest multiple listing services in the United States. I think there are roughly 47,000 subscribers at this time. Welcome back to our show, Jeremy. Great to have you on the show again. Thank you so much, Luz. Great to be here. Um, Jeremy has 25 years of information technology experience and um, came to the FMLS this this year, right? Is this is it? When did you just you, February, right, of, of this year? Of I, last I, year, Lou. So I'm going on two years at FMLS. Came at a good time when, with your 25 years of information technology experience in real estate, finance, legal insurance, and education, with COVID, especially, we uh, couldn't uh, have you at a more appropriate time because of the high, de increased level, really, of technology requirements as a as a result of COVID. And uh, I would just like to articulate one thing about. The or uh, FMLS's uh, mission, which is to positively change the future of real estate and to provide the highest level of products and services to real estate brokers and agents across the state of Georgia, which is a really well articulated mission. Jeremy, um, let's start with us talking a little bit about this year, <laughs> which was. <laughs> yeah, especially the fall year. I know mean, you could talk about it for people will be talking about this year for decades, but this fall market, especially, which was one of the busiest in the history of the state. Tell us a little bit about what happened and give us a little bit of a crystal ball reading into what you expect in the coming months. Well, Lou, as you and many know, we had a very odd year as the normal season of buying and selling that we experienced during the spring was greatly affected, unfortunately, by the pandemic. And what we've actually seen is much of that typical hot real estate season started to shift in, into the summer and continues through the fall. Um, from FMLS's perspective, statistically speaking, it's been a record year for the brokers and agents out there in the industry. And we, at the end of November, Lou, were uh, close to $30 billion in transactions, which is up 9% in sales volume compared to last year. And if you consider the challenges brokers and agents have faced, as you mentioned, using new technology methods, they are performing at the highest level and doing so while keeping their buyers and sellers safe using virtualized showing softwares and e-notary services that are now available in the state of Georgia and so many different manners in which they're helping. And to do that during a pandemic and to look at the activity, it's just been a record year in the greater Atlanta market marketplace from that perspective and you know mentioning we're, we are the fourth largest MLS in the nation 
We're actually approaching 49,000 brokers and agents, as well as appraisers that are members of FMLS. And that is the largest membership that we've had in our history. And as we look at some of the statistics that are going on specifically, you know, we saw a huge drop during the COVID months of inventory, of homes closing, uh, people that were unsure about listing their home. And we started to come out of the April and May timeframe with some of the greatest interest rates that we've ever seen, allowing many people to have affordability and home buying, especially first time buyers that they didn't have prior to that. We did see a huge drop of inventory that started to come back and actually I'm happy to we ended November with half a percent more new listings than we had last year. So the first time this year, we've seen more listings added in a month compared to last year was November that was up just slightly. Now, with that being said, inventory is highly constrained as we've actually had 21% more sales this year than we or in the month of November than we did last year. So the fact that we had half a percent increase of inventory does not help supply a 22% increase in the number of sales for the month of November. Year to date, as we got to a low point in April and May, year to date, we're actually up almost 2% on the number of listings that have closed in this year compared to last year. But the, the price of properties, Lou, it's definitely been as of late a seller's market with such a low inventory. And if you take a look at the list price, our average sales price for residential detached homes are up 15% in the month of November. They're up eight and a half percent year to date compared to last year. And even though we're aware that people are leaving some of the more common area type of homes, such as condo communities, and they're looking for larger spaces for either safety purposes or needing larger square footage homes because they're working now from home offices, we've even seen attached listings, sales price go up for almost four and a half percent for the month of November, as well as year to date. Um, so that's been pretty amazing overall that we've seen such a healthy economy in the housing market and the busiest that brokers and agents have ever been through the challenges of a pandemic. And it's been a crazy year for everyone, a year that we'll all talk about, but for the housing industry and the local economy in Georgia, it's a good way to end this year that the brokers and agents have been so successful in helping home buyers and sellers and doing so in a positive light and seeing all the activity from that perspective. So speaking of inventory, Jeremy, what are some of the things FMLS is doing to help agents with this shortage of inventory? Absolutely. Uh, inventory has been challenging. One, some people are not comfortable with listing their home right now because of COVID. We've had the ability to provide the agents and the brokers virtualized types of environments for showing the homes. Virtual open houses were launched this year. Showing time and Remind platforms and Cloud CMA platforms, they all provide our FMLS members with a member benefit of being able to do that uh, for their sellers who want to be more comfortable. But the biggest ticketed item is, Lou, as you know, a lot of agents still go door to door looking for inventory and they farm traditionally walking around neighborhoods, talking to people, leaving flyers, and they need to transition to farm more virtually. Those aren't as willing to open their homes and have an in-person conversation. And so with Realist that we provide as a member benefit, as well as with Remind, these are tools that take a look at big data and artificial intelligence and analyze an entire neighborhood and provide our agents a virtual ability to know who might be tempted to sell their home. As an example, 
they take a look at who's out there with uh, baby registries for gifts. As we all know, as your family's expanding, you might need to expand your square footage and that would prompt a potential that you're going to sell that property. And so within Remind and Realist, every parcel in a neighborhood has a seller score. The higher the score, the higher the potential that that homeowner might sell because of a lot of different lifestyle factors that they've been involved in and a lot of data that our technology companies are able to leverage to provide agents the ability to not have to knock on everyone's door in a neighborhood, but make one or two phone calls out of the entire neighborhood based upon those seller scores that are out there. And another area there, Lou, from an inventory perspective is looking at commercial leases and rentals and what's going on in those marketplaces because of the constraints and in inventory. But I would definitely want to encourage everyone out there to take a look at Remind and Realist and the seller score opportunities so they can farm from the safety of their own home offices and be able to make more targeted calls for those that are out there. And when you do call again, let them know you have the technology tools as brokers and agents to help keep them safe during this pandemic while still marketing their property in what's been termed as one of the hottest sellers markets of all time for the Atlanta area as compared to many years in the past and an economy for the housing market that's been very strong as we go towards the end of this year and see some people that are starting to be more comfortable with listing their homes for sale from that perspective. The last time you were on the show, Jaron, we talked about the launch of the commercial lease property type. How's that going so far? Uh, yeah, Lou, so we launched commercial lease as another opportunity for brokers and agents in April of this year. Um, and we've had almost 1,500 commercial leases listed since April of this year, a brand new property type and a brand new opportunity for brokers and agents to earn revenue while allowing FMLS to help market those properties through syndication and distribution. And out of those nearly 1,500 commercial leases, there's only 240 of them active. So they've not all just been put in as a new lease, they've been leased. And the marketing ability an agent has with the FMLS tools are showing that out of those 1,500, less than 250 are active and they are definitely moving commercial leases since we've added those and added support for that. And we see commercial leases, I think I saw a car lot up for lease for nearly $18,000 a month. So the commercial leases that are there are all over the map, but it's going to be even more so important as we know that some companies are looking for more space and some companies are moving virtually and downsizing their space. So the fluid market of commercial lease is going to be really interesting to watch, but from FMLS's perspective is going to be a lot of inventory that we're going to see moving through the next few years as companies are rethinking how they do business due to the pandemic. So I would encourage the brokers and agents out there to put those properties into FMLS. You know, we only charge a one-time very small listing fee for commercial leases and it's there until you lease it and it's a one-time only fee. So the value proposition is huge for brokers and agents to put those commercial leases within FMLS and use that as an additional area to grow their business and their revenue or work with commercial real estate professionals that sometimes don't always belong or work with the residential based multiple listing services like FMLS. So Jeremy, in the past years, uh, FMLS has brought in economic experts to, for the benefit of brokers and have a, have a nice function. What, uh, what, are, what, are, what is FMLS doing this year in light of uh, COVID restrictions? Yeah, so we're doing something shifting a little bit virtually. We've got an event that we're going to be inviting all of the 2300 FMLS brokers and their broker managers to. That's going to be a virtual event that kicks off in January. And we're going to bring in and have a hot topics panel of a 
economist, they get to pitch their perspectives, their crystal balls. While I like to talk about statistics, Lou, and what's actually transacting in the market, I always defer out to our key individuals that are the true economists of the industry. And we're bringing in uh, Lauren Chun, who is the national uh, chief economist for the National Association of Realtors. And locally here in our own back market, many of you are familiar with Rajiv, who's done a lot of economic speaking for Georgia Tech and the state of Georgia, as well as John Hunt with Market Insights. And so we're going to have three experts in one virtual setting that's going to be available to all of our broker members to watch and have them give an individual pitch of their own crystal ball. And I'll get to moderate Lou and ask him some of the tougher questions and put them on the spot against each other as they talk to us about what does that look like in 2021 and beyond for the real estate market, for interest rates, for new home construction. I just saw John Hunt released that they're predicting a 10% increase in new construction permits next year. And he's going to be able to give a better deep dive of that on January 28th at our virtual event that we have typically hosted in person. We call it First Look, giving you a kickoff of the economic forecast coming down in 2021 and beyond and January as, as we kick off what we all like to see as a new year <laughs> in this world. Yeah, new year is can't won't, be, won't come too soon. Um, what are some of the things that FMLS is doing in, uh, in, in innovating technology for benefit of members? Well, Lou, we just rolled out uh, Remind Docs Plus this year, which is a state-of-the-art transaction management platform. Along with that, we have rolled out a multiple MLS editing software with Remind that works together with all of the Remind platform, including the transaction management and e-signature. And in the scope of the pandemic, we've shifted many of our FMLS Institute CE accredited training over to virtual. We've been using technologies like Zoom, which we're using here today, and GoToMeeting. Well, I'm happy to announce that we have now launched officially the MindFlash training platform so brokers and agents can get CE accredited training from FMLS for free as a member benefit, and it is self-paced. So instead of knowing you've got to sit in front of your computer for three to four hours with MindFlash, it's actually self-paced. So you can pause, take a break, uh, take a break for a little while and come back to finish your CE accredited training and we just launched our first class with Remind that's CE accredited. So agents now in the comfort of their home can do the CE accredited training anytime, 24 hours a day, seven days a week with the MindFlash platform. So that's one thing that we've launched this year with Cloud CMA, which is a great tool to allow you to provide comparable market analysis. And we also offer CE accredited training on how to use those platforms to create your comparable market analysis for your listing presentations or helping your sellers price that. We also launched the brand new feature HomeBeat. We were the first MLS in the nation to provide HomeBeat, which allows the agents to send an automatic message to their previous clients, buyers and sellers on their subject properties and what their neighborhoods are doing at a frequency that's semi-annually or every six months. So you're keeping in touch with your previous buyers and knowing that they may reach back out in a couple of years, three years, five years to know what their home's doing with an automated CMA package for them and be able to do that. And so that's some of the technology tools we've been offering. And we also pivoted, Lou, to offer our appraisal members software to help them automate appraisal software needs for getting those appraisals back for those mortgages that are out there. And so our appraiser members now for free as a member benefit, get data masters, which will auto populate their appraisal forms with FMLS MLS data and help them automate the process. And many of our appraisers are now using that 
being able to fill out those required 10,004 MC forms for the lending institutions. And they're doing that virtually now because the data we have available and the tools we have available. And we've even added in CE accredited training for our appraisers so they can come to the FMLS Institute that our brokers and agents have known for many years. And the appraisers can now get free included with their membership, uh, two two hour or one four hour class. And that class dives in on how to use the software and do automations for the appraisal industries. As we know, many of the mortgage and lending institutions have started to accept appraisals that are virtual where they don't have to physically go into the house and they can use that software as a member benefit to be able to do those forms for them. So we've really continued to try to expand the products and services that we've been offering out to the FMLS members. But in addition to that, Lou, we've not only looked at our own members, we did a partnership with the Middle Georgia MLS. And now, especially in light of the inventory constraints we've seen, our brokers and agents have access to all of the Middle Georgia MLS inventory, which is in Macon. And that's right there within the FMLS software that they get today. So looking at growing your inventory or your referral network, our members get access to that data. And at the same time, the Middle Georgia MLS brokers and agents get to use a lot of the software now that our members are using and they're replacing their transaction management platforms over with the Remind Docs platform. And they have just as of this week launched Cloud CMA in their marketplace that we're providing them and giving our agents and their agents consistent tools and building a referral network. And we have actually seen many of the Middle Georgia MLS members come back and say thank you because the Atlanta agents are sending them business because of the inventory constraints we're seeing today and we're hoping, Lou, that paves the way for us to add in other MLSs and other areas that our agents look towards a referral network and inventory, even not only just first-time home buyers or primary residences, but the secondary home market or an investment home market in other areas that we know that our brokers and agents look for as far as listings and as services for their buyers and sellers. So those are some of the few things that we've added in, Lou, and we continue to expand upon that and we're going to do so next year as well as we see our agents and brokers are using more and more tool sets than ever from the comfort and the safety of their own homes. What uh, on data, speaking of data master, tell us a little bit about the expansion on square footage information for to include below grade uh, square footage. Absolutely. I will say it was my own personal learning experience when I moved from Dallas, Texas to Georgia, and I went into the home buying realm, and I got into discussions about square footage, and I didn't realize that in the Georgia marketplace, below grade square footage is appraised differently than above grade square footage, which is a unique factor that is not that way in California. And in looking for homes based upon square footage, we only had one global square footage field, which we auto populate from the tax assessor's offices for the convenience of the agent when they're putting in a listing. Well, knowing the appraisers need below grade square footage and home buyers like myself need to understand what's finished above and below grade as it affects the value of the home and the layout of the home is we're expanding and are launching now actively, it's almost completed, additional fields for agents to fill out above and below grade square footage. So we'll bring in the total square footage of the property from the tax assessor's office, and then we'll allow the agents then to add in the specifics of above and below grade square footage, where some assessors do have that information, but it's very sparse. And then our appraiser members, We'll be able to use that to help better evaluate the appraisals that they're doing for the differences in price of above and below grade square footage that's finished and also understand what is unfinished versus finished in the home. So we'll be launching those. We've had agents and brokers, Lou, have asked us for 
that differentiation for many, many years. And we're happy that we're putting that into place. So as we kick off 2021 in January, we'll be kicking off that ability for the agents to go in and give more details about the home. So the homeowner can list their home more properly and the buyer that's out there understand what the square footage is, what the breakdown is. But again, we're going to need to rely on the brokers and agents to help put that information in so that everyone can use it. And I'm very excited to be launching that after being at FMLS for two years, knowing my own challenges and looking at homes and understanding the layouts of those homes and where the square footage exists in a finished manner. Congratulations on that, Jeremy. The My experience has been, there's been, I hope you will include in that a clear and well-articulated definition of below grade and, and above grade because the, the definition is a little blurry to a lot of people. <laughs> uh, it, it absolutely is. Some call it a terrace level. There is a help bubble right there inside the, the matrix. MLS software and the Remind Ad Edit software. So the agents can click on the help bubble, it'll pop up and it'll help give them the definitions and the alternative terms like terrace level that we hear used in some areas where others call it below grade when it's really the same aspect. But the educational piece of that will be very important. Other MLSs have that today and have been successful with that. So I think that's going to be something that's given a better value add on how FMLS manages the MLS data that the brokers and agents input and use to help their buyers and sellers out. But I think it's been something that's been a long time coming for many, Lou, and it's finally coming as we kick off 2021. It will be very helpful. I, Because different agents have different definitions and different m measurements. <laughs> it's been very blurry. <laughs> and... Um, so as we conclude the interview for this year and uh, the last one for the year, what do you have any words of wisdom or encouragement to extend out to the agents and members? You have almost 50,000 people who will probably hear this and um, like to have a good feel for 2021, even though this year in retrospect has been a very successful year for agents and, and um, selling real estate. Well, absolutely. As we wrap up, the last interview of the year here, moving into the holiday seasons, you know, I wanted to remind everyone that we do have three service centers scattered throughout the greater Atlanta area. And typically we would see agents and brokers inside of those storefronts buying products, but we've shifted those to be virtual. So the brokers and agents can order online and we will provide contactless pickup. They can even drive up to one of those service centers in Duluth, Kennesaw, or in Sandy Springs, where our main office is, and call in from the parking lot, just like a drive through and we'll fill the order on the spot for whatever they have as needs, and do it in a contactless, safe manner. And we've seen that be very successful. Our e-commerce orders have gone up 1,300% this year, as you can imagine, Lou, from that perspective, but just know that we're providing that out as a service in a contactless manner. So all of the signage, custom signage that we provide um, in our stores, as well as lockbox and key services that are there are all available. And those keys are also available to our appraiser members. So they can get the same level of key service with the same pricing as all the brokers and agents to be able to go in and do those appraisals. And they can do that right there from the FMLS service centers, again, in a contactless manner. But really, Lou, as we wrap up, I have to actually say thank you to the brokers and agents this year. They have been faced with the pandemic like many others, and they have been faced with learning new systems, new softwares, and a new way of doing business. And they have actually helped pulled the Georgia economy in a positive manner. We're here as a service organization to provide software, tools, training, and customer support. But the reality is the brokers and the agents on the streets are doing the business, Lou. They have worked in such a challenging environment and they have really helped the overall ecosystem of the Georgia economy, the greater Atlanta economy, they have provided so many jobs and so many homes in a safe manner 
out there to all the buyers and sellers. And they've done so with extreme circumstances as well as this low inventory environment and providing that dream for everyone. We close up here, Lou, I wanna say from all of FMLS, a huge thank you out to the brokers and agents for all that you've done this year to make this industry successful, to make FMLS successful, and to make buyers and sellers happy in their home ownership needs that are out there and help them pivot for a changing marketplace of how they need places to live for home offices or commuting changes or industry changes that they themselves have faced. And I just want to say a big thank you and happy holidays to everyone out there as we look to close out the end of this year with a positive note from a housing perspective. Well, uh, thank you, Jeremy, for all the work that you do and have done, especially this year in an extremely difficult time. And what good timing for you for you to come to FMLS with the increased reliance on high technology and your background couldn't be more perfect for this time. So thank you very much for your hard work and all that you do to contribute to the well-being of our industry. And thank you for listening. And um, again, the magazine is Atlanta Community Profiles. It's on fmls.com and atlantacommunityprofiles.com. If you need copies, please let me know, lou at louwhelan.com. Thank you for listening. Happy holidays. Have a good day.